All right, now we're going to talk about cultural barriers. But how does culture barrier? I mean, what is culture? Culture is a set of expectations, you know, values, norms within a certain grouping or conglomeration of people. When culture becomes a barrier, it's when cultures come into contact with one another and when their norms and expectations of behavior are not simpatico or are not the same, there can be barriers in the communication, create some create some friction there. And so really from this point on for the rest of the episode, we're going to be looking at differences between ideologies, between perspectives. And we'll start here with the cultural perspective. And we're going to look at this from the cultural perspective in three different ways. We're going to look stylistically, like cultural styles, and we're going to be looking at both the formal and informal structures of the hierarchies and respect within a cultural space and even the decision-making process itself. And we're going to do this from a country level perspective, just for ease of conversation. We're going to, we're going to compare Japan with the United States. And now I'm very well aware that not all companies in Japan and not all companies in the United States operate the same as one another. This is uh, going to be generalized, but the point is to make it generalizable And so you can just become aware of the types of things that you can be looking out for in your organization when you're working with people from different perspectives, from different places. Even, you know, if we're looking at businesses from the East Coast and the West Coast, there there might be these differences. And if you're not aware of it, if you're not paying attention, then it might catch you off guard and can set you back. And so this is this is the point. So we're going to start with style. Stylistically, uh, between the United States and Japan, generally speaking, we see a direct versus an indirect kind of approach to communication. Now, in the U.S., we're very direct, right? The, our norms, our cultures, our expectations are to express openly and provide feedback and opinions in an honest and explicit manner. This can be seen, you know, when you're in a conference room and you're having a meeting and you're like, hey, I, you know, people all that are invited to the meeting, theoretically, in a good working environment, are encouraged to voice their opinion. Otherwise, why would they be there? You know, so if you're in the if you're in that stage of of the conversation. So we take it on the flip side. We look at Japan and this is a much more indirect communication style in in the businesses in Japan and you know they typically rely more on nonverbal communication and an expectation of reading between the lines with a pretty heavy reliance on context being aware of you know that that gray space so to speak uh, but shifting and looking at these again US and Japan from a hierarchy and perspective uh, a hierarchy and respect perspective we can see that in the U.S., you know, we used to be very hierarchy focused, very hierarchy based. Um, but over the last ten or so years, we've seen a big shift in in organizations to flatten their company, to flatten the organization, and that is that has a, a direct impact on communication. And really, the purpose of it happening was communication because what we would see and this is this is the case from the military what we would see in the, in the military is if we want a decision made and it re- some decisions require the authority of the commanding general of the unit and if you're at like a battalion or you're at a company you know or you're in a platoon you know, your, your ability to get your voice and your thought and your question or request up to that commanding general you have to go so let's take it from the battery so at a battery level a company commander or a company a company commander says you know i i I'm, I'm want to request authorization for the use of this equipment or whatever but it requires the commanding general well it's got to go it's got to go from the company up to the battalion the battalion command team and staff have to review it say yes okay we're going to send this up to the brigade okay the brigade gets it same exact thing brigade staff the respective staff for that request and the commander's got to say yep okay i approve that this request then it goes up because each one of these levels requires yes i approve of this request from this commander and i'm going to i'm i am putting my voice behind this and my position 
of authority behind this request to send this up. So they're basically like, I'm asking the question. They're, the commander becomes the representative asking. And so then from the brigade, then it goes up to the division. Then the division staff reviews it, and then they send it to the general, and he approves or disapproves. And that process can take quite a while. So the idea is, and that was happening in organizations of the private sector too. So the idea was flatten, remove those layers, and so that way we can communicate more rapidly and we can shorten these the distance between idea and change or action in the organization. And so not even just the flattening, but another part of this part of kind of the respect um, perspective. A lot of people, when they hear respect, they think of respect towards their leaders, respect towards the senior folks around. Yes, that's absolutely true. Um, the, the manner in which we communicate, this kind of goes back stylistically a little bit, is a little bit more direct, open, honest. Um, and that's what we respect both, you know, a good leader respects that from their people. They encourage that from their team members and from those within their charge. And, and that's what the, those people want, what the employees want as well. You know, they want that type of direct communication. They want to be informed and, and be kept in the loop. But there's another, you know, kind of level of respect and that we can look at that as respect towards the organization. And, and that is represented frequently through like dress and appearance. You know, if, if people are showing up and their hair is all messy and they're not dressed uh, in somewhat professional fashion, it shows a different level of respect for the organization itself, for the mission. And, you know, I, I know there's a lot of people rolling their eyes right now. I feel it. I felt it inside. <laughs> it's okay. It depend. It does depend on your role. It does depend on your, your organization and your mission. But that is, that is the expectation that can be the norm depending on, on your, on your company. And the whole point is that in the U S even in a lot of the high tech places, you know, or in the tech side, I should say, that's, you'll see kind of more of that casual, uh, or like, I guess, casual business, you know, if there's, if there's professional, there's business casual, and then, you know, casual, there's like a new layer that's, you know, casual business. It's just, just below business casual, but just above casual or just casual, you know, hoodies and jeans or whatever. But the point is that's not completely unheard of inside of American organizations, especially nowadays. On the flip side, you have Japan as high levels of professionalism and dress and appearance and even the language and the, and the manner in which they're communicating with each other and uh, with the leadership. There's a lot of respect and deference given to those who are you know, older or in positions of seniority. And so that's if you don't know that when you're going into business and you show up to a meeting meeting with your American values and your American culture, or if you show up as Japan with your high degree professional culture, uh, you know, it, there's, and you're not aware of what to expect on the flip side, that's can make things a little bit complicated. You know? So, um, and, and you don't want to be caught off guard. And so it's interesting. One the thing I just thought about is that a lot of this, uh, cultural awareness is kind of put on the United States because we are such a um, a diverse nation that we don't expect other people to and other countries to to bend you know their culture according to ours we will we will shift like I had a really good friend that I've mentioned uh, on the show before and I've had on the show Mario Fox who completely changed you know, what he was going to wear when he went to go meet with somebody. I forget if they were from Korea or Japan. I think it was from Japan. And red is like, I believe is a power color. And so he wore some, or it's a color of high respect. And so he had some subdued, like he had a red uh, handkerchief, uh, pocket square, and he had like red socks and he knew he was going to have to take his shoes off when he entered. And so he had a red toned socks. And so the person noticed and even explicitly said, he's like, Oh my gosh, that's so great. I love that you're wearing red. It means this, this is valuable. And Mario already knew that because he did his research ahead of time. It's not as likely that somebody from another country is going to come in and be like, what's the, what's the standard here? And I mean, because, I mean, part of it's like, what is the standard? I mean, if you, depending on it, it could just be suit and tie, which is relatively the same across everywhere you go. But uh, they're not going to be like, oh, I'm going to go meet with, you know, I don't know, 
the people at Meta or at Twitter, I'm like, okay, I'm going to show up and this time instead of wearing a suit, I'm going to wear a hoodie. Like, it's like, what is the, what is the culture? It's, it's, it's different. It's much more nuanced. And so we do find ourselves looking that way, but that's, that's good. Like it's, it's, I think it's a beautiful thing for us to be in the position and us to have the respect and to take the time to understand that culture um, and to figure out, you know, what matters to them and what is an efficient way to communicate and what's a respectful way to communicate, to let them know that, you know, you're not some pompous American uh, person that's going to try to dominate the the meeting and the relationship that you're, you're aware you spent time looking into it. And that means a lot. And that can foster and strengthen those relationships. Looking in the decision-making process, you know, the U S oh, we tend to prefer open dialogues, open discussions and debate, you know, long pauses are generally seen as uncomfortable in speaking patterns. <laughs> so, so it's, it can come off or it may be perceived as a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding of weakness, of nervousness, you know, lack of experience, all of these things. And there is, or there can feel as though there's a, a, a higher degree of a chaotic nature when it comes to these conversations because of the emphasis on debate and making effective decisions as quickly as possible, getting to that answer and then going out and executing. It can feel forceful and like I said, a little bit chaotic. And you know, when we flip the script and we take ourselves back to Japan and their meetings and in their decision-making process, there's a lot, there's a, a much higher degree of a relationship focused, you know, uh, energy. There's this desire to build consensus, you know, to seek harmony. Really, at the end of this, it's it's just important to understand who you're going to go communicate with, who is coming into your organization, who, what businesses are are you engaging with, and and do your homework. You know, get to know those who are going to get into business with you and get to know those people even that you're hiring. You know, understand if they're coming from a different culture, if they're coming from a different place, like what is it, you know, what do they value? What are their expectations? What cultural norms and behaviors are they used to exhibiting in the workplace? All of these things are very important to assimilate people into your culture and to understand the culture of others that you are going to be collaborating with.